It's a wonderful thing to know that God is always with us. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And he's always right there. There's times where we mess up. We, we, we don't do the right thing all the time. But we mess up to the point where we feel as though we can never come back to Christ. We feel as though he is so far from us. And a lot of the times that feeling is developed or you feel that feeling because you've created the distance. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at the word of God. I'm coming to you guys from uh, Genesis chapter 3. Kind of coming out of the New Living Translation tonight, the NLT. And I'm going to read at, uh, start at verse 1. And I'm going to read all the way down to verse 10. It's going to be quite a few scriptures, but we're going to break these down. Um, it says, uh, now the serpent was the shrewdest of all creatures the Lord God had made. Really? He asked the woman. Did God really say that you must not eat any other fruit in the garden? Of course we may eat it, the woman told him. It's only the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God says we must not eat it or even touch it or we will die. You won't die, the serpent hissed. God knows that your eyes will be open when you eat it. You'll become just like God, knowing everything, both good and evil. The woman was convinced. The fruit looks so fresh and delicious, and it would make her so wise. So she ate some of the fruit. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her. Then he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they strung fig leaves together around their hips to cover themselves. Toward the evening, they heard the Lord God walking about in the garden, so they hid themselves among the trees. The Lord God called to Adam, Where are you? He replied, I heard you, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you see what happened there? If we do a little review over uh, Genesis chapters 1 and 2, chapters 1 deals with the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything in six days. But And it was during the sixth day that he determined that he'll make man in his image. So we're made, all of us are made in the image of God. God has created male and female in his image. When they say man in the scriptures, they're talking not about the male as a man. They're talking about mankind. So male and female were both created in the image of God. And so when, uh, when God made uh, Eve out of Adam's rib, he presented Eve to Adam and Adam named her woman. And so at chapter three, in the very beginning, they're in the garden and the serpent which they, they, in, in chapter 3, it states that it's the shrewdest of all creatures. So it was a creepy, very slick creature. And he caused, the serpent caused some doubt in Eve. When Eve gave the command to the serpent and, and said what God's command that Adam understood it to be, he said, you can eat from any of these trees, but don't eat from that tree right there in the, in the middle of the garden. He said, if you do that, you'll surely die. What did the serpent say? He said, you won't, you won't die. He caused doubt in that moment. And a lot of the times when we, are, we, we sin, we fall away from God, it's because of a doubt. It's because something in our mind says, you know, I might be able to get away with doing this one time. It won't be me. I, you know, I won't get caught. But the thing about it is, is those of us that are, are, are in Christ, there's a part of us that feels bad afterwards. Even if we ignore it, there's a part of us that falls away like, man, I got to get back right before I get back around, you know, going to church before I, you know, before I get around certain people because I know something in me doesn't feel right. That I don't feel right or something in me doesn't feel right. That is when we begin to cause that distance from Christ. And that's when we feel like, hey, God, where are you? It's because... In, real, in actuality, God is asking us, where are we? He knows where you are. He knows where we are right now. God knows everything, but he is a pursuer of us, even when we've done wrong. After Adam sinned, who came looking for who first? God came looking for Adam first, and he asked him, 
where are you? There's a part of us that needs to know that God is still pursuing us and he's saying, where are you? We are the ones that have created the distance from him. It's not God that walked away. God was walking amongst the garden in the cool of the day and he called out to Adam. Even when he knew that Adam sinned, he knew that Eve was deceived. He knew that Eve ate from the forbidden tree. She also gave it to Adam. He ate from it too. And yet God in, in, his, in his goodness, God in his forgiveness, God in, 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 in being the loving God that he is, he still said, where are you? And then he wanted to know what happened. And if we go along in uh, chapter 3, it's basically Adam saying, saying that, you know, the woman you created for me, you know, she caused for me to sin. He's kind of misplaced the blame there, which is kind of what we do. I wouldn't have acted that way if, and we come up with another reason for it. Bottom line is, don't beat yourself up when you sin. Know that you can come to God, lay it out before him. God, I got this struggle. I don't even know how I can do it. Will you help me? That's what God is there for. He's not there to, we think God is like a, a boxer that likes to just beat us up when we're already beat up. God is there to really say, what's going on? Why are you having struggles? Why did you eat from the, the forbidden fruit after I told you? He's, he's, he's asking questions for understanding. He is, he's, he's an understanding, loving God. That's what love is all about. Love is not about beating somebody up when they're down. Even in our personal relationships, we have to continue to remember that because we have to have that love of Christ coming out of us because people that are, are followers of Christ should be acting like him. We should continually ascend and continue to aspire to be like him on a daily basis. So this scripture, these scriptures are so key in understanding that a lot of the times when we feel like God has left us, we really have left him. They hid after they sin. We hide after we do the wrong things. We get we, we don't go around certain groups because we don't feel like we could be around them because there's something off in me. There is something off because you've caused you you've fallen away from God, but never know never feel as though you're so far from God that you can never get back. The distance you've created, so now the distance, he's coming in to close the distance, but he's not gonna chase you. He's going to ask you, where are you? And you're like, God, here I am. Here I am. I'm messed up. I think I messed up so much that I know you're disappointed in me. I feel like you're disappointed in me. We got to be real with God. The more real you are with him, the more you'll see the, you'll, the more you'll see him in your situation because there's a part of us that feels like, man, I really messed up beyond coming back from this one. But that's right where God can help you. As long as you can confess it to him. Lord, I got this struggle with this particular sin. Lord, I can't, I can't keep my, 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 I can't keep my pants up. Lord, I, I, I just got this addiction. Lord, this food, come on, we talking about all kinds of sin here. I'm not trying to point out everybody's sin. There's, there's things that, Lord, I got this lying issue. Lord, I can't stop about gossiping about folks. Whatever your sin is, know that it's not big enough to where God's going to leave you and know that the times that you feel like he left you, you left him. You can always get back. He's always going to ask you, where are you? Will you be honest with where you are? Or will you continually stay away and push him away? And God's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. He's so powerful, so mighty. He could, but that's not relationship. God is a God of relationship. So he wants you to be honest with where you are and, and be accountable for where you are. Like, hey, Lord, help me. And the minute that we do that, he'll help you. Will you let him help you? Let's get closer to God. Let's let him know where we are. Let's be honest with where we are. Let's work through this thing. As a community, we can do this. But it's up to us to be real with where we are.